Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and I upload videos on luxury fashion and accessories. If that is your thing, please consider subscribing below and hit that bell so you are notified each time I upload in the future. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through luxury bags I've sold and why. So without further ado, let's get into so it. The first item was the Mulberry Scotch Grain Leopard Clipper. Now I wanted this bag, it was between this bag and Speedy and I thought oh, I'll go with something a little bit different. It was very very hard to find and I ended up having to get it on eBay because they didn't sell it in Selfridges anymore. Um, and this was a bag that it's it was such a pretty bag to look at and um, it was definitely hard wearing but it had on each corner and the handle was a very light um beigey brown light brown a bit like fascetta actually um strap and the corners where you'd usually have feet was also made of the same leather i will insert a picture of this um, and basically they started not so much the handle but more so the feet or the corners started to go a bit darker in terms of colour and I started to get a bit scared and kind of stopped using it and when I get to a point with an item, especially an item that costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds, I, th I thought I'd better um, sell it on and somebody else will appreciate it but I don't want to be afraid to be using an item. so. That was um, the reason why I let go of that one. The sizing was very good in terms of like going to work and you know if I was going on a weekend away it was it was enough space in there for me to use that instead of like um, a travel um, trolley or a weekend bag kind of thing. Um, so yeah it did it did definitely fit its purpose um, and I did love that bag. I, I thought it was very different. I didn't see anybody else wearing it whilst I had it. Um, and yeah, I did absolutely love it. But as soon as I started to become a bit worried and stopped reaching for it as such, I thought it's time to let go. So that was my Mulberry Scotch Grain Clipper in Leopard Print. So the next item actually after this because for a period of time I didn't have um, this size bag in my collection um, I just I used other bags and then you know when you feel like there's something missing so I bit the bullet at the time and I purchased um, the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 in monogram so I purchased this and I'd watched a good few videos in the meantime on YouTube actually um to see how the leather kept up you know was there a difference you know that kind of thing and i think what made me bite the bullet in the first place was because it didn't have the feet it, it just had you only had the handle to worry about so i actually got the speedy 30 um and i did like it it was definitely perfect for the time um but i quickly became scared of them handles as well and um, even though I'd watched so many videos that basically said you know Bichette is going to darken a lot of people liked it and I thought oh I, I think I could jump on board with that but actually I stopped reaching for it because I didn't want to make it I didn't want to date it here I didn't want to put it in the sunshine so um I got rid of the 30 also it was a little bit on the small side for me to use for going to work so um I sold that and used the money to get a Louis Vuitton Speedy 35 in Damier Abine. Now this bag was my favourite. I was so pleased and I definitely got my money's worth out of it. I uh, used it every day whether it was going to work, on the weekend, it fitted the bill for everything. It was just the right size, I had enough space if not a bit more. Uh, if I was going on weekends away, I could use just that, um, and I absolutely loved that bag. Um, and then I remember I was sat on the train going to my head office in Scotland, and I just I looked at my bag, and near to the zip, uh, I seen a bit of red, and you know the inside of the bag is red, so when I 
looked closer the, the canvas had cracked now in my head i thought do you know what laura you've definitely got your money's worth out of it um and i as soon as i got to my hotel once i'd been in the office all day i emailed louis vuitton and i was like is there anything you can do send them some pictures and he said no nothing we can do about that sorry so um i got rid of that and i kind of thought i've just spent i think it was six or seven hundred pounds it must have been six nearly nearly enough uh, on this bag and don't get me wrong i got my money's worth out of it but should that really be happening so i ended up popping it on ebay actually getting quite a bit of my money back which just surprised myself really given it was in very good condition and um, but there was a little bit of cracking and my problem is and i think this is my problem right across my bag collection is once i see something that i don't like i, I don't use it i don't reach for it I don't think about it um and that is it so then i know when i get to that point it's time to let go um so yeah that was my louis vuitton speedy 35 in damier a bean the next item was a valentino bottle green valentino rock stud pouch now i purposely bought this gosh it's five years ago now um for my first anniversary because i was going to over to venice and i bought it for the evenings out um and i used it i think twice and when i came home on some of the rock studs there was black marks and I only went to dinner, so I wasn't didn't get drunk or anything. Um, and when I went to dinner, come home, and then when I got home to the UK, I noticed these black marks on it. So I messaged Valentino, and they basically said, "You've got a few spare rock studs, and you can use them." <laughs> and I thought I'm not gonna replace them. So um, that was another one that went for eBay, and I thought. Given at the time that clutch was about £400 and I used it for two days and it was already like that, I, it just really put me off the rock stud collection overall, even though I do think it's beautiful, it's very pretty, um, but I just couldn't use it anymore. Um, and I haven't, I, I browse often like on Selfridges and I'll see maybe a rock stud bag that I really like and I like it but I'm not sure because of this situation so um, that was the, I, I will insert a picture of the Valentino rock stud pouch in bottle green. So the next one was a beautiful bag and I did look at it for quite a long time. It was the Aspinall of London Lottie bag in the small size in rose gold. Now, I, it was one of those bags that you take off the shelf and you just look at it and you think, oh, it's so pretty. So I'll insert a picture of this one as well. Um, so this bag had quite a Chanel-esque to it. And I think I thought that with the chain and the style of the bag, um, how you opened and closed it, that kind of thing. Um, and after a few times of wearing it, the clasp, so how it opens is you have to put like a buckle through like a metal part and then push the buckle down. So from doing this motion in and out to open and close the bag, the tip of the buckle that you close um, started, the rose gold started to peel off. And again, I got to that point where I was like, I've seen that now, I will not use, I must just get rid because there's no point in it sitting on the shelf. Um, the other thing was I had to be so strategic, even though it was such a beautiful girly bag, uh, I had to be so strategic with how I placed things in it because it had like a, com a compartment at the back and a compartment at the front and then one in the middle. Um, and because of the one in the middle, it was st stitched in, I think. Uh, it just there wasn't an awful lot of space but I'm guessing that was just because it was an evening style bag I mean it was such a beautiful bag but and such a shame with what happened 
Um, so yeah, that was the Aspinall of London small Lottie in rose gold. So the next item was the Saint Laurent Kate crossbody bag in black grained leather with black hardware. Now this bag to look at was just like, oh my gosh, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But the problem I had was actually on the top of the sign, um, there's like these screw like, let me see if I can show you. So I'm going to show you this as an example, but at the top there, you can see those little screw like um, pieces and there's one down here on my all black or so black i think it's called ysl cape bag that starts started to lighten and i was thinking to myself this bag cost i think 12 or 1300 pounds maybe 1400 pounds and i've used it three times and already we've got this problem and I thought, uh, I haven't even got the energy to message YSL and see if they can fix it, see if it's an ongoing thing, because now, because once you send it back to me, I've had the same problem with a Gucci bag that I've still got in my collection. If you send it back to me, the same thing happens. You send it back to me, the same thing happens. So I think over the years, I've just learned that if there's a problem, get rid. <laughs> so yeah, I got rid of me St. Laurent Kate bag because of the tarnish well the lightening of the hardware just up here so now for me personally whenever i get a ysl bag i will only go with gold hardware or silver hardware so the next item was my alexander wang rocky bag now i had this in a black pebbled leather and rose gold hardware the only problem I had with this bag, as nice as it looked, as subtle but out there it looked, was it was so heavy. I would only use it on days where I knew I didn't have to carry other stuff because it was far too heavy. Uh, obviously, you've got to do it for the fact that it's got those studs along the bottom. And, um, you know, when, when it's a casual day, that bag really dressed up for your casual days out. So, um, yeah, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't keep that one just because it was so heavy. Uh, so then I stopped reaching for it. Um, now then, I actually ended up buying that one pre-loved, and I remember them being about eight or nine hundred pounds, and I think I paid a hundred and fifty pounds for that one when I purchased it. Um, and I was glad I didn't pay full price for the fact of how heavy it is. Um, but yeah, I'll insert a picture of that one as well. So the next item was the Balenciaga Mini Papier in navy blue with silver hardware. Now this bag I just didn't reach for, I think because of the time I had it, because it was during the lockdown, but also the soft leather. And it had structure, but it never had structure. Like, if you put something in it, it would have great structure, but if it's empty it's a bit more like floppy and uh, i think i've been wanting a navy blue bag in my collection for so long and a, a navy blue bag with silver hardware as well and it was so hard to find in other brands and i wanted it to be a casual bag and but this balenciaga one um it went crossbody so that was a bonus but um the leather was too soft and it, 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 they didn't have a grained leather version in that colour, so I obviously ended up taking that one. And yeah, I just had to let that one go because of the the softness of the leather and the lack of structure for the style of bag it was. Um, it just it didn't fit my lifestyle at all. Um, so yeah, that was the reason I let that go. And the last item is the gucci gucci is i think it's called um black paint and clutch bag now i wanted this piece for years and i finally found it on vestiaire didn't pay a lot of money given it was a gucci 
um, clutch bag. It came as full set and I think I paid about £200 for it. Um, but it just didn't fit what I needed it to fit for a night out. So um, I don't carry an awful lot on a night out, but because this bag was very slim, I'll insert a picture below. Um, I felt like I had to go out and put things in my pocket or, you know, just can't, you can't take that, you can't take that, you can't take that. And it ends up being nearly, near enough everything just because of the, it was really small, but long. So if anything was a little bit high, it wasn't working. So yeah, so please let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions on any of the items that I have discussed with you today. Um, and please let me know if I'm not the only one that does this in terms of getting rid of what you don't use and how, how do you get around getting rid of what you don't use because I do find that difficult. This, I'd say in the past year, I've been a lot better in terms of closing my eyes and letting things go because uh, I don't use them. Um, but yeah, I've got to that point where if I'm not using it, I shouldn't have it because I've just wanted to look at and other people might use it, you know. So yeah, so that is the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.